Hello everybody. It's been a while, but let's go ahead and talk about scorpions again. We're actually going to be talking about how to stretch your content. So here are the basic scorpion uh, models I created. I don't have any animations for them yet, and I haven't turned them into proper monsters, but I don't have to to talk about how to stretch the content that they require. Um, when you create an RPG, you can only create so many unique monsters because it takes effort. So you need to stretch those unique monsters as much as you can. And uh, in the olden days, what you would do is you would change the color palette. We can still do that. So if I were to pause the game and I were to choose one of these scorpions, I could drop another material onto them, like, say, the slime material. And I could also choose to make that scorpion a different size, so... Oh, my mouse just died. I think it has really brilliant timing, don't you? Let's go ahead and... Uh, plug my mouse in. I hate all these clever mice these days. There we are. And let's go ahead and resize the scorpion. So we'll make this one a little bit smaller. Oh, we want to make it smaller on all axes. There we go. There we are. We've just created a, a variant. And now you've got two kinds of scorpions very, 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 very easily. Of course, uh, the, the method of just recoloring has kind of gone out of the window. It's not, not very popular anymore. But in this case, we do have a, a subtle advantage because the materials aren't simply a color. We, when we change materials, we can do a whole bunch of other stuff, like make the material transparent and so on and so forth. So it's, it, it can go a little bit further than the old day palette swaps, but in the end, palette swapping is not very good. It doesn't do as much as you might hope. So what are some other methods of creating different kinds of scorpions? Well, let's take a look at this slime scorpion, and we actually have a couple of sets of arms that we can choose to um, to create here, to use. So let's go ahead and click on our arms, and here it says mesh circle 003, because it's not named or anything. It's not the best way to do things, I don't recommend, I recommend you name your meshes. But I actually have a file in our Blender import called scorpion arms, and there's a couple of different versions, and here's bird skull arms. So I'm just going to drop that in there, Ooh, and look, now we have a different kind of arms. Uh, this is actually a little bit annoying because the way that uh, Blender, uh, not Blender, the way that Unity maps um, uh, meshes, skinned, uh, skinned meshes, is awkward. So it's difficult to just drop the skull arms in there. We can't just say, okay, well, we're going to drop the bird skull arms into that scorpion because it doesn't ever line up properly, even if you choose the right bone. Uh, you've got to do some gymnastics and it's not worth doing. So instead, we can just swap out the meshes by specifying which mesh that skinned mesh renderer is actually rendering. It's much easier, trust me. Uh, and in that case, what we've done is we've just created a scorpion with some new arms. And of course, we can also add in all sorts of attachments. So if we were to go over here into the armature, you can see that there's a ton of bones. If you alt-click, you can expand everything so you don't have to dig deep. Let's go ahead and add in a light. How about a point light? There we go. And we can uh, just do that again here on the other claw. And so now what we have is we have two point lights that we can drag into those gaps in the skull, uh, in, in the, uh, there we are, like this. Uh, now 10 is too long, let's try 3. And uh, maybe we'll up the intensity, like so. Uh, we can choose to put on shadows, but most people can't handle shadows. Their rigs aren't strong enough. I mean, a couple of shadows, sure, but if every single enemy you fight has two shadow sources, no, that's not going to work. But that's okay, this is supposed to be a semi-transparent enemy, so not having shadows is, is fine. And now you can see, this scorpion definitely looks like a whole different kind of uh, threat. So that's the basic idea behind creating multiple kinds of enemies out of a single kind of mesh. Uh, you can swap out which meshes, that's called sub-mesh swapping. You can change the materials, uh, and you can change out uh, the... You can also obviously change out the animations, and you can change out the attachments. In this case, the attachments are those glowy lights. You could try and do this programmatically, but in general it's easiest to just create a scorpion, like so, uh, like we just did, and then just grab it and rename it glowy scorpion, and then just drop it in the prefabs directory. Boom. 
that's much easier than trying to generate them. There are times when you want to generate uh, variety uh, live. For example, if you have a whole bunch of humans and you don't want them to all have the same face, you might vary up their face randomly, uh, and then you don't really care who has what face. It's just it's just for for looks. Um, so that is the basic idea, and this is something that we will be using a lot of. Uh, I actually have another scorpion that I played around with just to just to show you, and this guy is uh, similar to the one I just created except that his light is different and it has shadows attached to it. Uh, and you can see how even that looks very, very different. So you can do a lot with this, and it's a lot of fun, and I strongly recommend that if you are going to create an RPG, you cut your monsters up into pieces like I've done. I've got separate claw, leg, body, and, uh, and tail pieces, and then you can replace those meshes with whatever other meshes you want later on. The problem is that the bone structure is going to be the same, right? So we can't really change uh, the, the, the exact layout of the monster because the bones are always going to be the same. However, in your animations, if you've been careful to not use scaling, then you can actually use scaling now. So in this scorpion here, what we're going to do is we're going to find the body bones. And these are the body bones, right? And then they go back up into the tail. So what happens if we scale these? you can see that we really get a lot of extension. And we can do the same with the leg bones or uh, maybe the claws. So let's go ahead and scale up these claws. You can see that I'm scaling up the claw bone, but I'm actually scaling them apart as well because it doesn't understand the difference between scaling and motion. So we'll scale them up manually by just typing them in 2222. Two, two, two. And then over on the other claw, 2222. Two, two, two. And then these lights are no longer in the right spot, but that's pretty straightforward. We just move them around a little bit. Oh, come on. Where are you, lights? I seem to have lost track of the lights. Well, it doesn't matter. Who cares? Uh, but the point is that that's something else you can do as long as your animations do not scale the bones. If the animations have bone scale as part of their uh, uh, as part of their animation, then your system will revert it as it gets animated, and you can see that that's exactly what happened here. So even though I have changed the size of the claws and all that stuff, they get reverted in an instant because my animation includes some scale down. Such a shame. So you've got to be careful not to use scaling in your animation so that you can use scaling in your bones uh, to vary up your character and your monster's exact size. This is not something that's limited to monsters. Uh, if I wanted to create a big beefy character, rather than trying to just make broader shoulders out of a mesh, it's far better to actually scale up the shoulder bones that will scale up the shoulder mesh as well, but it'll also give you a broader shoulder base so your arms are further apart. Um, and that's the sort of thing that is really, really valuable. And I know this has just been kind of a conceptual um, episode and kind of short, but I figured that's a good way to dip my feet back in and try and recover from literally three straight weeks of snow. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll get back on track. I am working on another project, uh, several other projects, so you may see other videos interspersed and these may not crop up more than twice a week or so, but hopefully we'll still continue to make progress and really this scorpion is making me feel like uh, that would be a cool ass enemy, don't you think so? <laughs>